Hello, let's learn the basics of flat. To install flat, you just type this in the terminal. Pip install flat. Now, create a new file. Then import flat. So, first you need to have a main function, which will have all the main code that will run as the app starts. This is how you write the main function, and you pass the page instance of flat in the main function. Page is nothing but the layout of the app or the front end, or you can say UI. For now we won't do anything in the function, so, just type pass. Now, in order to start the application you need to use the app method, and mention the target function which the app should call. That is the main function. After saving the file, just come to the terminal window and run this Python file. And you see, the app has started. Since we are not doing anything in the main function, the page is blank. Now let's learn how to add elements on the page. In flat, they are called controls. So, let's add a text on the page. We can do that by using the text function or method of the flat library. It's like how you create an object of a class. So here, the text variable is the object and pass the desired text in the value attribute. You can set the font size too. But this still won't display anything on the page. In order to push the text on the page, you need to use page period add method then pass the control object. You can even set the color for the text. Let's run this code and see. And there you go. You can even add text on the page dynamically. Just define the object and add it on the page. Now, you can even set a text value like this. If you know objects and classes, you must be familiar with this. To put this value, you will have to use the update method. The update method is used when you add or update any value to an existing object on the page. So if I run it without the update method, the text won't show up. Now just uncomment. And there's your text. Similarly you can set the size and color to the text. As you saw, when I added two texts, it was automatically displayed one below the other. But say, if you want to display it next to each other, then you can use the row function. This is how you can write the row function. And pass the controls that you want to display in a row, you need to pass them in a list. You can pass one or more controls. I've added one. Also, if you want to display the control in the center, then just set the alignment as center. Now, I'll add the other control too. And you see, both the controls are on the same line, next to each other. I'll just remove the unwanted controls for now. Okay, so, let me show you how I can display something dynamically. Here, I'll show you how we can add a countdown. We'll first put a for loop that will decrement from 10 to 0. Then, inside the loop set the decrement value to my control, and update it. Then, put a sleep of 1 second. Let me run the code. And, that's the countdown from 10 to 0. Okay, now, let's learn how to add a text box and a button to the page. In order to add a text box, you need to use the text field function, and pass the label value.
To add a button, use the elevated button function and pass the text to show on the button. Now just add both the controls to the page. Let's run. And there you see, we have added a text box and a button. Now, to display them next to each other, which function can we use? You're right, the row function. Let's run. And there it is. You must be wondering how to do something on a button click, or even how to accept inputs. So, let me show you how you can handle an event like button clicks. It's very simple. You need to set the on click attribute on the button and pass to it the function name that you want to call when the button is clicked. So, we need to create a function inside the main function and put an event parameter to the function. Here, E is the current event. Now in this function, we will use the text box value and write something. So, to write something on the page, we use the text method. And we can use string concatenation in Python to write a sentence with the text box value. Then, we can set the size and color, and then just add it on the page. Let's run and see how this works. Bingo we clicked on the button and it took the input value and displayed it in the sentence. I'll comment out some unwanted things for now. Okay, now, using this text box and button, I'll make a simple to-do app. It will be very basic. I want you all to try on your own, and let me know in the comments if you were able to do it. So, here, I'll create a separate text box and button. Also I can give a width to my text box, and I'll create a button, in the same way, by using elevated button function and pass a different function name in the onClick attribute. I'll also just add a title with the value as to do app. Now, let's create the function. So here, instead of writing a simple text, I'll put a checkbox with the value of the text field. To add a checkbox on the page, you need to use the checkbox function and just set the label as the text field value. Like this. Now, after adding the value, Let's clear the value in the text field by simply setting the value as blank. And we can even focus the text box by using the focus method. Let's run the code and see how it works. Great! That's how we can make a simple to-do list app. If you like this video, then please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, see you in my next video.